Introducing the fake PTA Tour Golfer, Tiger's best friend, my dad, Danny Woodhead. Also introducing the self-proclaimed science expert, an amateur ramen noodle chef, my dad, Matt Slauson. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. All right, we're with our uh, our boy, our former teammate. Some would call us uh, life partners. Uh, Kellen Clemens, we played with him for the Jets and also the San Diego Chargers. And Kellen, what are you up to now? I'm, I'm, and the St. Louis Rams, too. Yeah, no, but I'm saying we played with him there. Oh, he yeah. made, sorry. Y'all didn't... <laughs> I, didn't y'all play I invited y'all to St. Louis, and y'all were like, mm, "No, we're good." I was like, "No, thank Chicago you." Chicago and New England. Actually, St. Louis is a cool place, actually, but um, we didn't win a lot of games. Uh, to answer your, yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm back in the Northwest. I'm up in Washington State. I'm in Walla Walla, Washington, right now. Um, got a company that I joined up, just partnered with, uh, called The Latest. We're uh, helping, um, we've got a behavioral assessment, helping companies uh, recruit, build, and develop just absolutely crazy stuff. Um, some of the insights that come out of it. Um, and then I'm doing work on the sports side with emotional intelligence, mental toughness, helping coaches um, connect, engage, teach, motivate their athletes based on their personal preferences. Um, and then uh, different career uh, assessment, career projection, career advice, different things for their life after sport because i mean the three of us were fortunate but the reality is is that what is it 97 percent of college athletes aren't going pro um and even you know even a lot of us that are fortunate to play for a while still end up needing to do something when we're done um that just because you go pro doesn't mean that's the end of it so being able to help those athletes in that transition a little bit more you know the big question is well what do i do now and we're able to, to add to uh, provide some real insights with that. So it's, it's very fulfilling work for me. Um, get my, I come largely autonomous out here. So I get to, well, when there is going to be ballet recitals and basketball games right. and different stuff, I'll get to see him again. But, um, yeah, it's been all good. It's exciting stuff. That's awesome, I'm, man. I'm glad to be on. Thank you guys for having me. When no, thank you. T- send me the text. I'm like, this will be a trip down memory lane. I'm excited about this. Hey, and, and let me tell you this. Uh, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for Zoom, but you have n- definitely gotten even more attractive. And I, you know, I appreciate that. There's some silver coming in here because we've got four kids now, right? Yeah. Last time I yes. saw y'all, we only had three. I've got four, and there's some silver coming in. But the wife likes it, so I don't care. That's all I need. I'm like, hey, do, are you good with this? She says, yes. I'm done. Perfect. Thank you, my, though. My my wife has been cool with me since I was like 23, starting to get the silver. Right. So let me tell you this. It helps. Yeah. <laughs> it helps without a doubt. I appreciate it. I'm good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. You guys look like you can still play. Yeah. If you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're looking at me, I don't know if you'd see that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I don't feel that. From well, here up. From the well, neck Kel, up, I agree. From the neck up. Yeah. Well, Kel, I am I'm definitely still at playing weight. Um, so you know, I can roll anytime. Anytime they need me back, I'm ready to go. Uh still still lifting hard. Although I discovered uh you didn't uh, I'm sure you haven't been been listening to to us ranting about just nonsense all the time. But Woodhead and I went to Florida a couple weeks ago and I got to discover just how athletic I still am and Uh-oh. I can't play anymore. <laughs> He, he 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 got in a race, a forty yard dash with three other guys, a professional golfer, a guy that runs a professional golf event, and some homeless dude. Ten yards Uh-oh. in, slop pulls his hamstring, can't function, and he's hopping over the line. Thankfully, one of the guys face planted, so he didn't. He podiumed at least, so that's he's a still, positive. Still got a bronze. Yeah, yeah he was on the board. He he who, uh, who he got won on the board. it. It was uh, the homeless guy. Three, the, the homeless guy. The homeless guy. guy was a sleeper. Oh. I think he was a he. He was a former Olympic sprinter that you know is is now down on his luck apparently because he just came out of the woodwork. I mean, looking like Usain Bolt over here, ridiculous. But the thing is, he performed. <laughs> he just, uh, 
just hustled you. Completely <laughs> hustled you. And he did I'm it while he was ho- holding a drink in his hand. Um, <laughs> Which is incredibly impressive. It yeah, really is. Yeah. Well, Slaw, I'm just impressed that you're still working out. I mean, with oh, largely you. no real reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I, you, I'm really impressed. Well, he, the, the problem is, Kel, Slaw still thinks that he needs to squat till he poops. And that's not probably what you need, you know, when you're almost 35 years old and retired. I, yeah, but that's why I win at life. So you need to start pooping when you're working out. Yeah, if you do that, I guess you win. It's a secret. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take your word for it because I have no ambition to put weight on my back again like that. So I'll, I'll take your nice, word for it. Uh, speed, speed squat day and box jumps and some. Oh, glute, he does it all in hands. Box jumps? Heck yeah. But why? <laughs> well, because I haven't had the discipline to lose enough weight yet. Uh, so I'm still. I'm still big. So uh, I need to squat hard so my body doesn't just fall apart under this mass here yeah. well, box jump like what is the thought like i'm gonna land hard enough coming off this box jump that like i'm gonna lose 10 weight. pounds is gonna like fall off <laughs> like it's gonna dislodge <laughs> it's just your knees man oh your gosh i you know what cheers to you i, hey, I appreciate it i gotta be honest i still work out too i can't say okay. i've done any box jumps but i <laughs> i I'm definitely trying. I'm just trying to lose weight and I'm trying to just yeah. look, you know, good enough for my wife to be like, yeah, I kind of understand yeah. why I married him. Yeah. You know? well, that's nice. I, like I, I look at myself and think, man, you're kind of an ugly guy. But yeah. if she doesn't think that that's okay. It's rude. She's the only opinion that matters. I tell you what, I put on the 2020 Ooh, you <laughs> did. I, did. I definitely did. So I'm, it looks good on you. Out. But thank you. I appreciate it. It's a big sweatshirt. It's a big sweatshirt. And I woke up it's this a Jimmy Chitwood like, right, sweatshirt is, is what it is. Yeah, it is. It is. I woke up this morning and was like, all right, this is going to be filmed. Let's not put a shirt on under the sweatshirt because then that adds more bulk. So it's slimming. Hey, that's fair. So, uh, Kellen Clemens, I'm, I'm going to interrupt yeah. you because I want to – what was it, 11 seasons? Is that I got 12, kind of. Tw- 12 ish i got credit for 12 11 that, full that, 12 credit okay that that's on me yeah. we got we got a that's 12 okay. nfl vet um I, yeah exactly suspect it best it says nine for me so it's always <laughs> it's always one less than you actually played i think that's, <laughs> that's what right. it is so okay. yeah let's let's uh let's maybe get that fact checked um but if if we could go into uh how how much you miss football I, I would like to to hear that. Uh, I'm zero. What not are you? Hardly, not hardly. I miss this stuff. I yeah. miss the locker room. I miss you can come guys. on anytime. I miss. Thank you. I appreciate. I'm not just dialing. You guys might have somebody that's like you know like like a good player or somebody who's popular. You are a great. Player. And I, you might, I might just pop up in the screen. It's like, hey, Clemens is waiting in the waiting room. Ooh. And then, and then, and then we're like, that's oh, why so you have a producer. It's like it wasn't us. It was our producer didn't <laughs> let you in. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we, you already know where I stand on workouts. <laughs> no, uh, right. You know, the getting hit when I did play in the preseason and whatever, and the I think the mental preparation, especially for a guy who's mostly a career backup, right? I have to do all the preparation, and then it's best case scenario if all of that is wasted and I don't play at all. Um, that's best case scenario for the team, right. um, is if I don't play, that's a heck of a job description when you think about it. Um, but, uh, like that part, I just, that part, I don't, I don't miss, yeah, I don't miss it. I've watched a few games. I watched the Colts games this year just yep. because of obvious reasons. We'll probably get into that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm still watching y'all a little bit, but I, I don't, I don't miss it. There's, there's more to life than what we did for, a, a living for a while there's just more to it so much more to it i, I think it's yeah. uh and, and i and i and i mentioned it on a, we were on a we were on another show and i said you know i'm excited i mean when you're talking about the colts and philip i'm excited for philip to see this side of the nfl because man yeah. it is good it's good it is so good i mean there's there's obviously uh 
there's obviously things financially that were great about the NFL. Right. Well, but, 100%. Like, but, you know, and we had cool experiences, but man, this, this yeah, NFL but, is incredible. But it's, you know, but it's interesting. And we all, you know, in knowing you guys and being with you at the Jets and then, you know, you obviously, when you become friends with somebody, even when Matt goes to Chicago and you go to, uh, you know, New England, you keep up with guys and you see it, but I, you know, I, so I know enough about both of your stories to know that there's some, there's still parallels where it's not what people think. Mm -hmm. You don't come into the league and it's all great. And, you know, you play your contract and when your contract's over, you renegotiate and you get another contract and, and it's not all in the, you know, up and up. People aren't always honest. People aren't always, it's, it's a business. And I, and I forgive me if I overstate, but I think all three of us at one point in time, were on the wrong side of the this business. business will bite you in the backside. And that part is, I think that part's more of a challenge and it really smacks you in the face early when it happens, you know, you, you see it and you expect it more after, after we got to the, you know, seven, eight, nine years, seven, eight, nine yeah. and beyond. Um, but the, the first time that you see it, it's a, it's shocking. It was, it's sobering. I remember, I mean, Danny, we were in, um, uh, um, you know, similar situations in New York and then yep. in New England, like just from a culture standpoint, but training camp, you saw it, Matt, the, that locker next to you is a revolving door. I mean, there were seven, eight guys that they right. would just bring in for two or three days and then gone. And that part, it's not college anymore. And a dang sure in high school. I mean, as you guys would say, you ain't in Kansas, Nebraska. You ain't in Nebraska anymore, Toto. Yeah, that is, I, that, that I remember true. that when I got to San Diego, uh, you know, setting up my locker. I come in, I put my stuff down in that locker. I remember you saying, hey, hey, slot, not in that locker. Get, yeah. <laughs> move over one. Move over one. Oh, yeah. okay. Sweet. Yeah. Well, at least, see, when I showed up to San Diego, I get there, it's good, and I look, I, here's my locker, I look, and my name on my nameplate is uh, is misspelled. <laughs> and I texted, I texted a couple boys, I was like, well, I guess I won't, I think I'll just rent here, probably won't buy. <laughs> Doesn't look like this is a long-term thing. They don't, uh, they don't know my name. That makes things a little <laughs> more difficult. They're just like, new guy. No, it's it's definitely, uh, we, I, I don't think you overstated. We We were definitely on the wrong side of some business, and yeah, they're. I mean, Slauson has been very, very vocal at times about <laughs> the business of different teams, and he's he's made it known. And yeah, I I mean, I will agree with it. I haven't made it as known, but yes, we we know that side, right, Slaw? Yeah, yeah. Are, you, are you trying to fire fire me up already? No, 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 no. You know I mean, it's that's early. Not what I'm about it's early in the show show for that bro that's not what i'm about i wouldn't do that i don't set you up i'm not a setter in volleyball that's not who i am i'm not steve nash don't don't put that on that's not who i am you know let's just get into it really quick anthony lynn just got himself oh. an offensive coordinator job big hire it's going to be real exciting to see the progress of the of the detroit lions offense congratulations to him it's incredible where does Stafford end up? <laughs> so it's just before you give, just I mean, it's a segue. Where does Stafford end up? Then we'll just <laughs> well. Where does Stafford we'll just, end up? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if New England makes a pitch at him. I wouldn't be surprised if the Niners. Yeah. Um, I think I don't think Indianapolis would be a terrible fit either. Oh no, I do not either. I think that would actually, I think that'd be a pretty good fit. Yeah, that's not I mean, bad. I don't know I, that I'm buying the Wentz reunion. With Frank, yeah, he's not going to Indy. Well, that's why they, that's why they hired Frank Jr. Yeah, yeah. you I know, understand. yeah, yeah. Wentz is staying. That's why they fired Doug. Yeah, well, I mean, Wentz's last, Wentz's last, or his really productive year was under Frank. Frank mm -hmm. was gone. I'm not saying Frank's. We've been under Frank. We know Frank's really good, but I, and I'm not saying Frank's the only reason because obviously Doug had some something to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think that's probably that's probably something they were they were looking at when they when they are hiring hiring Sirianni. But back to our we're, we're talking about we're talking about Frank a little bit. Well, let's talk about his old quarterback a little because you 
especially with this, you know, people in San Diego being able to hear this and Philip Rivers being being San Diego for over a decade. Mm. And sure. we I mean, obviously, we're going to get into it a little bit. Slaw and I, too, because we we played with him with Philip. But what was the what was something looking back? Because you were with him, like we were with him every day, but you were with, mm. with him in the same room. Mm-hmm. What, are, what are some things that people on the outside don't understand? We've tried to explain like why Philip's so good and why he's a Hall of Famer. Like, yep, you were in the same room debatable. right next to him. It's not. Yep. Yeah. Uh, before you get into this meat and potatoes here of that que- question, I just want to throw something out there, Kellen. I need to pump you up here. All right. Uh, you By are all here. means, Matt. Please yes, go. Here. I, I agree. I'm going to pump. I'm going to pump you up. You are not the type of guy to ever pump yourself up, but I'm about to do it. Uh, We're recording. Good. Let me show yeah. my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are. Floor is yours, Matt. Take as take as much time as you need. <laughs> all right. My first year uh, with the char- Chargers, uh, you know, coming in as a center. Uh, not really knowing what to do. Uh, I mean, I know how to orchestrate an offensive line, uh, but it's intimidating to come in there and be in, be in charge of, of, you know, that room and, and, and running the show and calling the shots and having a hall of famer behind you. Uh, but I remember just being blown away sitting in the quarterback room with you and Phil on Wednesday mornings talking about, uh, you know, all the blitz, pressures, exotics. Uh, and and you you were so huge for Phil. I mean, mm. I've, I've never seen uh, a relationship like that between two, two quarterbacks in this league. It's like you guys shared a mind. And mm. you, you were able to carry half of, half of the mental load for him. And, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. I don't even remember what, what game it was. I don't know if it was Jacksonville. So that would have been what, like week three or something. Uh, mm. And, and uh, on one particular coverage, Phil was kind of stuck. He didn't, he kept looking at him like, what is this? And you get up there and you start draw, drawing something. He's like, yeah, I mean, what, I mean, what's that safety doing over there? And you turn around and you go, it's palms. I had no idea. I remember that one. I, I had no idea what the hell palm, <laughs> Palms was. Was that your I mean, first uh, year, was that your first year, Slaw? Yeah. Yeah, that's my form Phil, form ACL. And then Phil goes, Oh, oh yeah, it is. And and it's just because you and him work so well together. Um, you know, it it, it was amazing to see. So I just well, want to throw I, that out there for the world. I I appreciate <laughs> that. Thanks. Thank you. It it was um that was a special um, that was a special four years. And when you talk about stuff that you miss, I mean, Philip, shoot, he and Tiff are um, our youngest godparents, um, super, I mean, we were just, we were very close. Obviously we rode to work together. We spent all that time in the QB room. Um, and, um, and it was, it was, but I, I appreciate that, Matt. And I'm, I, that really actually means, it means a lot to me because, I joked about it a little bit early in the show, right? It's best case scenario if I don't play. I mean, the man has started at that point 200 and whatever consecutive. He's a Hall of Famer. I don't see how that's debatable. Um, you know, he's now number five all time and, in, you know, all in multiple categories. And, and it's obviously best case scenario that I don't play unless we're up by 30 and I'm just going out there to run out the clock. But um but it was important for me to find a niche and somewhere where I could still contribute and feel like I wasn't just stealing money, which I would have. For still, sure. Without but, a doubt. Yeah. Because a lot of people do it. Yeah. Um, but they but, do it on a much uh, even steelier level. Yeah. But, but it was important to be able to contribute. And it's, it's interesting. I mean, if you want to look like physically at just my talents, I, I probably had the physical abilities to play seven. Um, when you add in just general good looks, I could have probably gotten an eighth year. Right. Um, but I figured, yeah, I figured Easily. a way somewhere along in the St. Louis with Bradford and then moving into Philip, I figured out, okay, how can I compliment this? Who's, who's in front? 
and be able to do it. So I, I, that actually means a great deal for you to say that. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, to go back to your question, Danny, about Philip and what made him just so uniquely Philip, um, it was, you know, and there was, that was probably the only example in four years, Sla, where I actually saw something that he didn't. Um, I'm glad you were there to witness. I'm glad yeah, you were but there he to needed witness it. it. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure it happened, happened. I'm, I mean, we all know how much, how much crap there is to look at oh, and, and the fact that, that you and you and Phil could, could tackle it together and it didn't just have to be on him mentally to do it all that yeah. that was huge I think you you played into a ton of Phil's Phil's success over those four four years like uh, I think I you should get that. at least a, a gold arm I, I would take that just <laughs> you a know bust. yeah a bust in there yeah Even, that's yeah true. um hopefully COVID's over by the time that he goes into the hall and we can actually be there in person that would oh, be I'm, great oh we'll be we'll all be there five years it's got to yeah. be done by five years right <laughs> I hope so gracious <laughs> It'll be done in a month, by the way. <laughs> anyway, continue. Anyway, but I, I think that there was there's a couple things for for him, Danny, that that I saw that were just on a different level. I mean, we we were in New York with Favre, who, you know, who I I got to see behind the scenes. You see, just the gunslinger and Favre, and but yeah. the dude watched film and was a student of the game. But the way that Philip was able to recall information just a rolodex of information we would be watching something you know he we would be watching we're playing chicago and it's uh you know this defensive coordinator and he'd be like you know what when that d coordinator was in dallas we ran this play on a third and eight and he's you know he's going back to like 2006 yeah, and he's like there's like five i think it was hey duddy who was the video guy oh, yeah. i think there's like five yeah. minutes left in the second quarter when they ran it oh yeah Oh yeah, we were right hash. We were going right to left, like somewhere like 42, minus 42, yeah. minus 42 yard line and pull it up. And I'm not, it was, I, I never saw him wrong ever in four years. He was never wrong, but his ability to bring it, bring it all to the surface when he needed it and access that information was uncanny. I mean, you know, every NFL team, you get done with a series, whether you score, you don't, you come off and you'll see it. Guys, look at the pictures. I mean, I was sitting there on the sideline and I still had to look at the picture and be like, what happened? He saw all other 21 guys on the field and the refs <laughs> and the refs knew it. Be like, hey, 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 you're out of, you're out of position. But he, um, but his ability to have that vision, I think was the second thing that he just, he never looked at the, at the pictures ever. He would come off, he'd go to the, he'd set his helmet down. He'd go to the sideline to sit there and watch and sometimes talk trash and, yeah. And that was it. And it was, it, but it was, those were the two things for me that, that I looked at and I was like, that's just un. those are beyond just human abilities of what he's doing. He's operating at a different level in those two areas. And then you guys know the competitiveness. I mean, you see it on the film, you see it on practice, you know, practice, you see it on the golf course, you see it wherever the dude hates to lose more than probably anybody else around. He yeah. just hates to lose. Totally agree. This is Out of Nowhere Pod with Kellen Clemens, 12-year NFL vet, talking about Philip Rivers a little bit. And we're talking about just where he's at mentally. I, I always remember how the dude never took notes because he could just remember it. It was a photograph, Crazy. Photo, photographic Crazy. memory. And yeah. I have notes and notes and notes in a notebook. Oh, yeah. Because otherwise I can't, I can't figure it out. The, so the, the mental part of the game is something that – all these NFL fans that are into fantasy, into this, into that. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand why the, I mean, Philip Rivers, the Tom Brady's, why they're so good. And, mm -hmm. and people are like, I just don't get it. These young NFL quarterbacks, they have a better arm. It's like, that's not the quarterback position. No. Like, I mean, no. does it have something to do with it? If you can make all the throws? Yeah, definitely helpful. But you yeah. being a quarterback what's your take on you have all these young cats who are great and maybe have a good year or two and then they mm -hmm. drop off. Maybe they have a great quarter co coordinator where they scheme stuff. Cause there's definitely some coaches that do scheme stuff unbelievably, yeah. but then you have the Phillip rivers who he, he directs every protection. So if blitzes are coming, he changes protections. Whereas there's other, 
other quarterbacks that never change the protection. They, no just, idea. they have no idea the sinners doing yeah. it and they don't know where things are coming. And people are like, well, but he can throw it. It's like, you don't get it. You have yeah. no idea the worth to, of, of the Philip rivers type quarterback. Right. Uh, what, what would have, you have to say on that? The, the mentality of a quarterback or the mental, um, I don't know. The, the, I, I don't even know the, the capacity to, to, you know, process all those things. Yeah. I think that, I think I would say it this way, Danny, because I, I right. You, you, in order to just get a chair at the table, you have to be able to throw it some, right. you got to be able to run around. You have to do you have, physically. There has to be something. Wow about you okay to to get from that college to that level but when you when guys come in they're playing checkers i mean some of them are playing go fish <laughs> right right when guys come in yeah, and some of them checkers. aren't even good at go fish right and this and they're not even good at go fish. <laughs> but when guys come in so you know yeah i can throw it i can throw it through a wall but i don't really know what's going on defensive coordinators are so smart and that and that that's why sometimes you see guys have success one year and then there's fall off and it's like, wait a minute, why he's the same guy. And you can, you know, maybe this free agent is wide receiver left in free agency, maybe the offensive line is it. Here's what happens is that defensive coordinators are paid to shut you down. And those defensive coordinators are like, okay, now we see it. Now we see a few games. We see a full season. We can evaluate you. Where are you? I mean, Bill uh, Belichick's the, one of the greatest to do it, right? Where are you weak? We're going to attack you there. Where are you? Str- where are you strong? we're going to limit your strengths and we're going to attack you with your weaknesses. It's over. And if you, if you can't adjust and you can't adapt, it's you're done. And as soon as, then as soon as somebody that's smart reveals that weakness, you're done. And the, the, the guys that excel and play for a long time are playing chess and Philip rivers very early in his career was playing chess. I mean, you would watch, it was, it was one of the funnest things ever to watch him go up against some of those premier middle linebackers that would, that had the ability to Mm -hmm. change. I mean, you guys saw it firsthand. I saw it from a distance, you guys were sitting there like right next to him or in front of him in your case, Matt. But, um, but you know, Philip would check Sean Lee would check and then Philip would check back and then Keekly would check. Obviously on the same team. We're not in the same game right now. But those guys, when it goes back and forth, that stuff was, that was fascinating. And there's just not a lot of guys, you know, Brady's playing chess. Peyton was playing chess. Phil's Breeze. playing chess. Yeah. Breeze, Rogers, those guys are probably, those guys are playing chess. But the rest of us are playing checkers mm-hmm. or go fish or war right. or whatever. Right. And war is a great game. Like when it's you're a great five. game. But yeah. It's well, not gonna, you right. You're not going to be a Hall of Famer. I, you know, I've played too much war and go fish and checkers in the pandemic. I'm, <laughs> I've just, I've just been home. You're, you're, you're over war. it. You just want to play some I chess. Am. That's I all you wars. Want. Yeah. And a lot of solitaire boys, a lot of solitaire. <laughs> hey, going off of what anyway. you're talking about, Philip seeing it um, in game slot can say a little bit protection wise, but yeah, there's, there's one play. There were multiple plays, but there's still one play that I remember. And Philip and I would always have – we'd have, like, conversations in the backfield, like, yeah. throughout his cadence. And mm-hmm. I'd be like, hey, hey, you want me to still run this? Or I, and, and we had a – it's like, hey, they're man-to-man. I'm going to run a read route. I'm not going to yeah. run a – I'm not going to run a swing. Yep. And we'd have those conversations. Well, in one game, it was my first year um, in San Diego, and we're – we're playing in the first round of the playoffs in Cincy mm-hmm. end up being a big third down. And I'm supposed to be running. I can't remember if it was a read or a swing route. So I was yep. on the right side out of, out of the shotgun. I'm running it to the, to the right. Yeah. We're literally in the cadence and he snaps it uh-huh. in the balls in the air. I'm getting ready to, I can't remember if it was a read or a swing. He goes, Danny run a sneak. Yeah. And Luckily, I had been with him long enough, and we did some – I mean, we had a whole year together, and we were on the same page. So I'm like, all right, I'm running a sneak. Yep. We end up picking it up. It was a third and five in the – in Cincy territory. We end up scoring a touchdown. It ends up being a huge play. Yeah. It ends up being a huge play in the game, and that's the type of stuff that people don't understand. 
oh. is is the ability to adapt late in a cadence, late in a, I mean, obviously late in the play clock where Slaw can go into it, just how he changes protections right at the last second. Uh-huh. But that's the type of stuff that I will always remember. Or when we were in Oakland, we weren't getting anything. We, we were low on numbers. And he's like, hey, Danny, just, just run a sneak here because he knew it was man-to-man and he knew we could pick it up. And, he, and we did it. And we, I remember we both walked back into the huddle laughing. Yeah. We were like, he goes, we're just playing street ball out here. Isn't this hilarious? And I'm like, yeah, this is a lot of fun. And that's the type of stuff that I remember that people, that fans don't get to appreciate. Right. Yeah. And it's the, that's the equivalent. I mean, I don't know how you trans that is, that's the light turns green. I'm halfway through the intersection and then all of a sudden I'm supposed to go the other way. And I got to make a complete U-turn and do something totally different from what I am. And, oh, by the way, I'm over in the UK and I'm not even, you know, I'm no longer even in the, on the left-hand side of the car. Right. I mean, it's just that type of stuff. And slow. So, and he would do it with you as one person. And, and there's, there has to be that. Not everybody can do that. It's a testament to you. Not everybody can, because some people would be like, oh, and then they just fall down. Because I don't know what to do now. I, what I've been told, and then my ability to adapt and adjust and go. Slaw, you know it. He would tell now. Now he would change things. <laughs> Green eighty. Hey, Ray, Ray, Ray. Oh. And it's just like uh, we were in a full sort to the left. I know I got a nose here. I got stinking Seymour or whoever it is sitting here. I got Will Fork sitting on my hip. That's just a tank of a man. Big and now person. he sees big person. And I'm in a full sort, knowing that if Will Fork crosses my nose, I got to somehow kick to the to the to the five long stick, and I got to bring this car and all this stuff that you're. And then he would at the last minute go, "Nope, we're going right," and you have to just go. And it's like yeah. jumping out of a plane, thinking Phil's got us. I <laughs> <Yeah>. guessed him. <laughs> Phil's got us. Exactly right. Yeah, it was a Will it was, non, it, it was an unreal amount of trust you have to have playing on the field field with, with Phil. Um, you know I. Uh, Danny and I have uh, discussed this a couple times on the pod. Uh, it was always it was always really fascinating to me where uh, you know all the all the double A pressure teams, you know, double mug. They're, they're oh, that's hugging that was up since game that Danny's yeah, talking about. Yeah, hugging hugging up safeties and and Zimmer. and and we'd be there and uh, you know some some sort of of back scan position or back scan play and, mm-hmm. and Phil right before the snap would just yell over the back, go on, get. Yeah. And I'm like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Like we're supposed to be scanning here. This is a six man. He just goes, go on, get it's because he, he, he knew, he knew yeah. that, that that safety might be, might be coming. But if he sends, he sends the back out, he can't come anymore. Or, yep. Or they're going to move a linebacker out out with them, and now you got the easiest the easiest completion uh, out out there because Woodhead is going to make whoever this linebacker is look look silly. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, the other the other times when uh, you know you be in the tight tight red, and a lot of defensive coordinators run uh, uh, you know their zero checks, and and there was a couple times. Uh, I mean, I remember it against the dolphins a couple times uh we never really talked about it during during the week but phil would just yeah. just like he'd see zero he would check to 880 which yeah which 80 protection was something that we didn't talk about during the week uh yep. which <laughs> which for me at that time i'm going wait like yeah i i know what 80 is and i know maybe another guy on this line knows what 80 is and you're just gonna right. check to it in the middle of the game yeah and then yep. right before the snap, because they're bringing the double A, hey, diddle, diddle, three up the middle, <laughs> Phil goes, hey, go hot, go hot. And I'm like, whoa, no, we just checked to 80, which we haven't talked about. Now we're going 80 hot, which we definitely yeah. haven't talked about in, in since like the spring. Go hot. See that? Like, oh, my gosh. But, yeah. Oh, and, and, it's, it's, so, it's so true. And, it, oh my gosh! It, it's unbelievable the type of stuff that he did. It, uh, it, just, it was on a different level, and, and that I could just, 
I can I can see you sit there too. You're like, all right, at some point I gotta throw this ball between my legs. But in the meantime, I have to now tell these other these two dudes on my left, two dudes on my right, probably a tight end, somewhere down on the end, what we're doing back in the day when there were actually fans at games, so nobody can hear me anyway. And you have to block double A gap with a safety coming over the top. It's like we're squeezing, leave the D end. I don't know. Danny's got him or he's going to Well, yeah, or if it's oh if it's gosh, double A gap and he's best. 80 and then makes it 80 hot because the D ends dropping with me, the yeah. 80, 80 and 80 hot change everything for the line. It's Big like difference between it, 80 and 80 hot. Oh and difference. everyone's like, it is. I remember it being is. back there sometimes. I'm like, I, 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 I think he changed it to 80 hot and I'm just going to go with it. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's oh, one of those. My gosh. It, it's he, so he, amazing the type of stuff he did. Kel, I don't know if anywhere else you ever were, you, no. you heard anything like this, but like Philip, no. the, right. But the thing that's crazy that I, that I, when I first got there, I remember like, all right. And then after practice at two o'clock, uh, Philip's going to run the offensive line protection meeting. And you're like, what? I was in New England. What? The offensive line coach did, did that. Yeah. I don't, think people understand what he mm -hmm. did he All ran them. offensive line protection meetings mm -hmm. that's an offensive line coach's job but he said no we got to get nope. on the same page kind of go into yep. something like a little bit of that he, he's the well ultimately he knows that it's his butt that's on the line right he's if they're wrong he's the one that's going to get hit and and to give credit to some of the offensive line coaches that were around in san diego they had input but bill ran it and Phil came up with the plan. And, Phil, and they were good coaches. We're do. It's just they were good coaches. It's just Phil's like, I it's my butt out there. I want to do it. And that was, I think, if there was any part of the you know the chess game that he played, that protection bit was his bread and butter. That was the part that he he loved. That part. That was the part that he just because the other stuff to be honest, I mean, identifying coverages and stuff was kind of boring for him at that point. Yeah. But the chess game of okay. We did this. You've done that. Now what's next? What's your compliment? You know, you, you've done weak dog. Now you're showing weak dog. What's the compliment? What are you trying to get me? To, it was that chess game and he was the best at it. And there were defensive coordinators where I was privy enough just to hear overhear a conversation where they would just, you know, they'd say, look, you're the best. I enjoy going against you because you are the best at doing it. It's so hard to get to you and to get, you didn't see free runners, you don't no. see free runners on Ever. Philip Rivers. He doesn't miss that. He doesn't ever send the offensive line to the left and then they bring the nickel ever. He doesn't miss that. The thing that he I just thought doesn't. Yeah. And the thing that I thought was amazing when he would run, I don't know, we'd be running Florida or whatever, and he'd be throwing the over because they're post safety, throw you in the flat, Danny, you know, yeah. take the flat guy. And that was cool and stuff to him. But like, I loved it when we'd be, I remember we were playing the Bengals one time and, and he switched up the calls because he knew when he pointed to someone, they mm. knew where the slide was. So he'd fake point and say something else, a different name and he'd Remember. pick it up and we'd get a seven yard gain and he'd be more excited about picking up the oh. blitz in a seven yeah. yard gain than a, a, a 50 yard over route. It yeah. was crazy. hundred percent. Yeah. That was the stuff that, that, uh, that wound his crank. Yeah. It was, um, and you can, there's just so much, there's so much information that, that he was processing in such a short amount of time that you just, you can't, can't fathom it. And a lot of us mortals can't do, I just yeah. can't. This is Kellen I, Clemens. Yeah. Kellen Clemens on the out of nowhere show where, I mean, he's, he's talking about the in-depth stuff that we've, everyone wants to know that doesn't see um, in that quarterback room with Philip Rivers. Um, but if, if we're going off of we've been talking about him mentally talking about throws one of the best, most catchable balls I've ever caught. He, yeah. He's unbelievable on the football field. Yep. But I'll tell you what, some of some of my best memories with Phil and it happens to be with you and Slaw too. <laughs> almost. I mean, all the time because we are always around. It could have been either the golfing at night during training camp. Oh my god. At, at Murphy Canyon. Oh my gosh. Or just any of our any of our golf outings when yeah. we decide to play games. Uh 
Do you, do you guys so, have any uh, memories, memories? You know of- what? You know the one that I was thinking about when we would do. Um, I thought about this after Slot text me the other day. When when we would go out to what was it like Sequan the casino for the yes, course before, for the team built thing whatever yes. before they all shut it down. Do you remember the? I, there were like I think Cyphers was there. It might have been. There was like it was five it was Cyphers. Six of us. It was Cyphers was, Cyphers was the other one. Yeah. And you know we play our eighteen. We're playing the Wolf. And we play our 18 and like it was somehow it was, t- I can't remember exactly. It was a par three. Whatever. But we go to that par three and Phillip's up and in only Philip fashion, he's like, I'm going lone wolf. I mean, and calls it ahead. So all the bets, everything doubles. There was, I mean, not like. It might've been triple. Of Cause there yeah. was, I don't, maybe it was, I will call it yeah. quadruple just for the yes. story. But it, there was, I mean, there was a, enough money on the line. that was like, this is a bit. And he steps up and hits <laughs> it onto the bridge. <laughs> There was water behind, and you know you cart path only on the par three, and then you kind of pull up to the green, and then the bridge goes on, and he hit it onto the bridge. So we're like, we've got him. He's dead. He's gonna owe all of us. I mean, we're eating steak tonight on Philip. Yep. And he never even flinched. I've got the video on my phone. And I hit it. I think I hit it to ten feet. You hit it to ten feet. We're like, it's over. I mean, we're just rooting for Danny. I don't know where I was. I was probably in the water. Sly, you were probably like, I don't know, nine feet. You were probably right inside Danny. (laughs) But yeah, and then I six he putt. comes up. I, I can still see it. He, <laughs> I can still see it. he's got the guard rail. Yep. Sitting, his ball is on concrete, and he goes up there. He's like, "Watch this!" Pulls out his fifty six and kind of you know <laughs> sets it back in his stance and like hits this weird little bump and run thing that hits off the of bank, the wooded bridge. Rolls on off of the bridge and and then one putts. He gets up and down off the bridge to push the hole because I think yeah because I mi- I missed I I missed my putt. I, oh my god! Or what I about, just, yeah. or in in the most competitive, he could be playing as trash as ever, and oh. he's on eighteen and could be down the most money. He's like, all right, I'm going wolf. Or it would it would actually start out. He'd walk up, tee his ball, and you'd just hear him go, ow. <laughs> he didn't care. Oh. He didn't care. And and those were those were the times. I I do want to, I do want to. <laughs> talk about one of our other golf uh we get to 18th hole slawson's down slawson's down and not <laughs> not playing good not playing good yeah. he picks the amount of money he so picks- i'm down i'm down to woodhead i i will throw out how much money i'm down here i was down to woodhead like 450 bucks i'm down to kel like 250 bucks and i'm down 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 to phil like, I don't know, like, like 20 bucks. So I'm like, all right, I just can't come in last. Now, let me tell you, I've, I've, I've seen Phil in the other position when, when he's down and he bets to the point where he will go from last to first. It's double jeopardy. I, I, I am betting. So i just don't end up last. So I'm like, uh, so, so yeah, I was down to Phil like, like 20. We we're playing Wolf, so you just you howled. Yeah, I mean, so great. I set it at $30 just so I don't come in last because I know I'm gonna beat beat Phil. I feel so good. Feels no, but so this, good. but Wolf was a team game, so it was us well, versus yeah, you. I, I, I know that, but that I said at $30, expect, expecting you, Danny, to just pipe it off the tee, and, That's right. and you hit it into the bunker. And then I'm like, okay, well, at least I have. And then Kel, you hit it just right of the bunker in, into the, not, not into the trash, just into the rough. And uh, I'm like, well, I can't take Phil because I need to beat Phil to come in third. (laughs) So I didn't call him and I'm like, oh crap. I just went alone. And Slaw was literally in the trash. In the trees, uh, rough, have, everything. I have and that I, picture too. I have that picture <laughs> on my phone too. I mean, Sly, Sly could have been train. dressed like Danny right now in camo, and like you were in a tree stand. You hit that ball out of a tree stand. <laughs> and then he yeah. hits it even so more ended, left, like twenty yards. <laughs> and then I think you you birdied the hole, so then so then it doubled. <laughs> It was, so then it doubled, and and so it was a hundred and eighty dollar hole. So I ended up being down like like eight hundred bucks. And there's nine, four nine hundred bucks or something. And, and there's four thirty plus year olds. Lay, I was laying on the fairway laughing because I saw you over 
in the jungle. And I was like, what on earth just old, happened? Like, this is Slaw's first yeah. year. It's like, I don't want him to get too down in money, but I don't really care because you have to pay. And no, was it Kellen or was it Phil at the end? It was Phil. It was Phil. That's and such it a me just off jabroni so bad, thing to do by Phil. And he so, says, yeah. Slaw, you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay. To I your got credit, so you hot. paid and paid quick. I was so hot. I said, I know oh fucking charity gosh. case. <laughs> Scott, Scott, bleep that, bleep that, Scott. I know charity case. Scott, oh. Scott's like, oh, oh, Scott, oh my gosh. Well, that was the thing y'all saw to me just talking about Phil. I mean, because he could, I mean, he could hit it. The short game was was a lot of times probably you know carried him a little bit. Yeah. But uh, but he could play. He would have some holes. He'd have some runs. He'd have some streaks. And then, you know, for us, you know, for us non-Woodhead, I don't know where you're playing right now, Slauson, but, you know, me and Phil would also have some holes where it's like, wow, this is, I mean, you're not doing bad for your first day, but, uh, you know, whatever. But, like, we would play y'all, and we'd be playing teams, and we would be stinking. I mean, just stinking. And in typical, I knew it was coming. Like, we'd lose a couple holes in a row. Like, we would, you know, I mean (laughs) – you guys would go out and like par birdie on a par three and Philip and I'd come in like a, you know, a five and a six and just lucky to get a five and a six. And it was like, we're just trying to, we're plugging holes in the Titanic. And, and he would helicopter his wedge up to the cart and be like, I press. <laughs> it's just like, why? Oh, you're doing, you're just, That's my money I, too. I'm like, I'm like, I know they, these, I'm like, Phil, these guys play in the NFL. They don't need the money. Okay. <laughs> this is not a charity case. This isn't a 501 C3 deal. This is, we don't need to just be this donating off. to the Woodhead Slauson Children's College Fund Memorial, whatever. I, we don't need to do that. Oh man. Press. I mean, just, and then if we didn't win that one, you know, he, they get up, he's angry and it <laughs> right hey. field press. That's that's the oh. best thing about Philip Rivers though is I was him. He was competitive. He was fun. He's dead. He just it, retired. <laughs> that was him. That was him. some out. For some out for like, man just retired. I mean he's still like he's on his deathbed or something. Ah, more, yeah. Man, that's how he was. That's how he was. <laughs> he was. Oh man. Oh, well that was what a dude. Yeah. That great dude awesome friend i know he's a great husband and dad kel thanks yeah. for coming on thanks for coming oh, on the show we appreciate it this is awesome y'all holler at me anytime especially if you move the time back a little bit 6 a.m early is yeah no you're right. you're right we can we yeah. can do that so.